In this section I'll be briefly talking about continuous time systems and discuss some matters of notation as well as ways in which systems can be interconnected. On this slide I simply want to introduce some notation that relates to continuous time systems. So a system with input x and output y can be described by an equation of this form where the symbol h is an operator which mathematically represents the system the operand to this operator, which is x in this case, is corresponding to the input to the system, and then the result of this operator, when we apply the operator h to x, what it yields is the output that's produced from the system h when the input is x. So in other words, the quantity y here is the output of the system. Now note that the operator h maps a function to a function, not a number to a number. So system operators are fundamentally mappings between functions and functions, not numbers and numbers. Instead of using operator notation like what we have in this equation here, uh, we can also use arrow notation. And what this arrow means, the thing on the left of the arrow is the input to the system. The thing on the right of the arrow is the output of the system. And then the symbol above the arrow is just indicating which system it is that we're talking about. So in this case, it's the system H. So we're putting the input X into the system H, and this produces the output Y. This is essentially what this notation here means. Sometimes it will be clear from the context what system we're talking about, so it's unnecessary to specify the particular system. For example, maybe we're solving a problem where there's only one system involved, so obviously the system we're talking about must be the only one that's involved in that problem. So in context where it's clear uh, what the system is that we're talking about without having to explicitly identify it, we will often just drop this symbol and use a notation like what's shown here, where we don't explicitly specify the system because it's clear from the context. Uh, note that the arrow symbol and equal sign have very different meanings. Equal means literally the thing, things on each side of the equal sign are equal. They're identical to one another. Uh, the arrow does not necessarily mean that the things on the two sides of the arrow are equal. In fact, in practice, usually they won't be. Uh, if you need to attach some English word to the, the symbol arrow, a good choice would probably be the word produces. So in other words, this would be read in terms of words as something like the input x produces the output y when we put it into a particular system. Often when working with systems, it's convenient to have a pictorial representation of the system. And to do this, we use what's called a block diagram. So for example, if we have a system H uh, with an input X and an output Y, we might denote this with a diagram that looks like this. Often when we have more than one system, we'd like to be able to interconnect systems in some way. Now there are two very basic ways in which we can interconnect systems. There's what's known as a series or cascade interconnection, and what's known as a parallel interconnection. So in the case of a series interconnection, what we have is something like what's shown here, where we have two systems, one denoted by H1 and the other one denoted by H2. And with a series interconnection, what we do is we take the output of the first system and we tie it to the input of the second system. In the case of a parallel interconnection, that corresponds to a picture like what's shown in this diagram here. With a parallel interconnection, suppose we have two systems, one which is denoted by H1, another one which is denoted by H2. With a parallel interconnection, what we do is we tie the inputs of the two systems together so the same signal goes into both sim systems as input, and then we add their outputs. And we can mathematically denote series and parallel interconnections in terms of an equation. So for example, this block diagram here can be expressed in terms of this equation here. So what we're doing first of all is we're taking our input signal x at the far left of this block diagram here, and we're first feeding it into the system h1. So the output that's produced by the system H1 will correspond to this highlighted expression here. So H1 of X is going to be the output produced when the, to the, from the system H1 when the input is X. So H1X is what this intermediate signal is here, this output of the system H1. And then we take that signal and we feed it into H2 as an input. So this whole expression here, H1 of X, goes into H2. And then the output of H2 is this whole expression here which is equal to y. In a similar way, we can also write an equation which describes an interconnection 
a parallel interconnection that looks something like this. In this case, the equation will look something like what's shown here. So what we do is we take the input x and we first feed it into the system h1. So this output here will correspond to the expression h1x. In other words, it will correspond to this expression here. And we also take x and we feed it into the system h2. So the output signal here will be represented by the expression h2x. In other words, this expression here. And then we take each of these expressions, the outputs for, for the system h1 and h2, and we add them together. So we're taking the sum of these two terms, and this gives us the output y.